Hello, my name is Abby Bubble, and I sometimes go by the name of Simon, and it is October, and October means Eschenspiel. Well, actually, the Eschenspiel is still 30 days away, and so I kind of have created this list of the games that you probably should be looking out for if you are going to it, or even if you're just browsing the internet and trying to think of new games to get possibly for the coming year. So, this is going to be very similar to my Gen Con list, this is going to be 10 of the games that I really, really want to look for. And one other thing, anything that was in my Gen Con list is not going to be mentioned here. This is mainly because, well, half the stuff on my Gen Con list would probably still be on this list and that doesn't really make for an interesting list. All that being said, however, one nice thing to note is while Gen Con is typically more American trashy, it has a lot more theme to a lot of the games, they tend to be more story driven, and a lot of the announcements tend to happen for uh, Gen Con. Eschen is a bit weird in that it's all German precision, which means anything that's going to be announced has already been announced. At least that's the hope. I'm pretty certain there's not going to be another incident where I do my top 10 list and then the game gets announced a day later that I really, really want. So, with all that being said, let's get started. At number 10 is Meeple Circus by Cedric Miller. Miller? Millet. This is a dexterity-based ba dexterity game in which you are given a whole bunch of basically meeple pieces. So if you're familiar with games like Carcassonne, using those meeples, and I'm sure most of you have done this at some point, is building little pyramids of them. It's kind of in the same vein, or at least that's where the idea for the game originally came from. You're going to be given various performers who are in different colors. You're going to be given, given animals and wooden beams and barrels. And you're trying to organize them in a way that the cards describe. You'll get points based on how you manage to do it. And what's really nice is you kind of do it while, it's, while circus music's being played. All in all, it looks wonderfully whimsical, and I do like a good dexterity game. Flick'em Up and Junk Art have been two of my favorite. So, getting, a nicer, getting another one is just the cream on the top. Next up is Favelas at number 9. This is by Chris Bryan. Uh, it's being published by WizKids. This is a tile laying game in which you are building the favelas, famously populating in South America particularly in Brazil. On your turn, you're going to be placing down tiles and you'll be scoring them based on the color and based on the tile layout. Uh, what's interesting though is each round, the um, government, I guess, is going to be saying, we don't want this color, we want this color instead. And obviously you have to switch up your strategy. It's probably mostly going to be an abstract game, but I do like the theme. I don't think I've seen this before. And so this is definitely one to check out. At number 8 is Gaia Project. This is by Jen Strugmiller and Helga Ostertag. And in it, it is Terra Mystica in space. Most of you are familiar with Terra Mystica. It is a game where you control a race trying to tear from the landscape to your colors and expand your empire. This is promises to be the same thing, only it's in space. Instead of wooden buildings, you have plastic buildings, but a lot of the stuff that you do in Terra Mystica is going to be the same in Guy Project. You're going to be building buildings, upgrading those buildings, getting resources from them, and each round it's going to ask you to do something different. You might have to put out a space board, you might have to research technology for this turn. But if you're a fan of Terra Mystica, this is definitely one to look out for. I am still hesitant, mainly because I have Terra Mystica, so why would I need this? And something else is stopping me from probably getting this. We'll get to that in a bit. Number seven is Montana. This is by Rugeg Dorm. And in it, you are basically pioneers traveling to new areas in America and trying to grow town towns there. So in it, you're going to be hiring workers. Those workers will go out into the various landscapes, either going mining or trying to harvest various crops. And you're going to be using those crops to supply the towns back where you came from. So it's very much an economic game of pick up and, pick up and delivery. And you're trying to get resources back to town, which will give you victory points. The artwork is decent. I mean, it is Clemens France. He's known for these Euro-style games. 
Uh, these are basically his speciality. And I think the theme is nice enough for me to want to pay attention to this and see where it's going. There's not a lot of information on it, uh, but there are a few videos that kind of just go over the general rules of the game. Definitely one to look out for. Number six is Pulsar 2849. This is by Vlada Suchi. Um, this is a gold rush game. Um, this is basically a game set in space where you are traveling in your spaceship trying to gather resources to then sell. The idea is very much based on the 1849 gold rush that happened in America. Uh, so you're racing to get resources, racing to hand those resources in um, and kind of get victory points, but also trying to use those resources to get various technologies that will help you. The game looks incredible for what it is. There's a nice circular board to it. And what's interesting is it's dice driven, which means you're gonna be rolling a handful of dice and those are gonna be determining your actions. Low dice give you certain benefits, high dice give you other benefits in different regards. It's also by Chex Games Edition and they are one of my favorite publishers. So it's also gonna be a game I'm gonna be looking out for. Number five is the reason why Gaia Project isn't actually that interesting to me, and this is Clans of Caledonia by Juma El Juju. Um, this was on Kickstarter. Again, artwork by Clemens France. He's featured quite heavily in a lot of this top 10. Uh, but this is a game in which you are a Scottish land baron pioneering the whiskey trade in the early uh, Industrial Revolution of Scotland. It's set in the same style of Terra Mystica where you will grow out an expansive empire taking over territory as you go along and then you'll be scored on how well you did that territory. But as you grow out your territory, you'll gain access to new resources. These resources can be traded in for money and also will be able to fulfill various contracts which will give you victory points or will give you money. Each uh, player will also be given a special, well, uh, power. Uh, and the map is going to be variable as well. All in all, this is looking like Terra Mystica, but just so much more. And that's kind of really what I want. Also, again, the theme, it's just a nice theme. I can't wait to have some whiskey with it. I don't even drink. And the thought is kind of appetizing for me. Anyway, uh, this I'm currently a Kickstarter backer of this. So I'll probably be getting my copy in the next month and a half. So I'm going to be really looking forward to this, especially if this game is a hit, I can see it being sold out by the time it gets to Christmas. So definitely something to keep your eye on. Next up at number five is Atapalano by Rhino Stockhausen. This is a game by a designer who did uh, Orleans, or Orleans, uh, which if you remember correctly is a dice, not a dice, a bag builder. You will be putting certain wood, uh, cardboard chips into a bag and then you're pulling them out on your turn and then trying to use those chips to perform various actions. Atplano promises the same thing, only it is basically set in South America. You are a llama caravan driver and you're trying to deliver various resources to certain places and obviously you have to deliver the right resources to the right places and that's how the bag kind of gets involved. I will say I wasn't a big fan of Orleans and this is by the same designer. So I'm a bit trepid about it. However, if he's learned lessons from that game and he's included llamas, which look really, really awesome, I definitely will be looking forward to this game. I just hope it has a bit more interaction than what Orleans promised. Number four is Azul by Michael Kisling. This is a, kind of like a filler. This is a very easy abstract game in which you are building tile or mosaics using various tiles. Similar to Sigrada, you are going to be drafting tiles, these nice plastic pieces, and you're then going to be slotting them into your mosaic. And based on how well you slot them in, you'll be gaining various points for it. Now, I was a decent fan of Sugata. I thought it was a nice game. I just didn't really have any inclination to add it to my collection, mainly because I didn't really feel I needed it. But this looks like to be a similar like level 
and it might be something I enjoy just a bit more which will push me over the edge to actually getting it. Uh, it looks wonderful, the plastic tiles look incredible, I can't wait to see how it comes together. Definitely is something, I think this is a game that will probably sell out of Essen, I think people are just going to be picking it up because it is a small, smallish game, not too expensive, definitely something that people are just going to be adding to their collection, this is a kind of filler game. Definitely again something to pick up if you are there. Interesting enough, number three is Queen Domino by Bruno Cathala. Now, King Domo came out last year, well not last year, it was this year, but it was awarded prizes for last year, and it was mostly dominated. Anyway, King Domino is a game in which you are laying down various tiles and get scoring points, points based on how well those tiles are next to each other. Um, and they are, the tiles are domino, so you're trying to put green tiles next to green tiles, yellow tiles next to yellow tiles. What Queen Domino is, is not necessarily an expansion to the game. It is instead almost um, a standalone title, but it's more gamerish. So my biggest issue with King Domino, while it was really fun, is that there wasn't enough ways to kind of score points. I was always just trying to build the biggest area and have the most points for that area. Um, Queen Domino kind of promises to have a bit more variability in how you score your points. So it's not just going to be about building biggest area, it might be trying to gain the Queen's favor, a dragon might attack. Um, so they kind of add adding more, not theme, but a bit more layers, a bit more depth to the game. The cool thing is, if you have King Domino, this is going to be uh, compatible, so you can combine the two and perform like a 7x7 grid, which sounds pretty cool. And if it's priced the same as King Domino, then I don't see why you wouldn't want to have both in your collection. Really cool game. And yeah, apparently there's now money as well. Um, but yeah, this looks nice. King Domino was a fantastically looking game. It was amazingly produced. So if Queen Domino is anything similar to it, I definitely will probably pick this up. Number two is Yuri Rosenberg's new skirt. Now this has been in develop, but development for I think two years now. I think he showed it off back in 2015. And in it you are a, a landowner of the Lofotans. The Lofotans for those that don't know are an island chain in Norway which were very uh, famous for their fishing and they're very famous for the way they used to eat their fish. I think they used to like hang out on a rack for like a year and then never, anyway, getting off topic. But in this, you are a land baron, you are owning parts of the Lofoten and shipping companies are trying to buy out your land, but also you wanna try and feed your people with fish. You wanna cut down the forest to expand your territories, buy new fishing boats for yourself. What is interesting about this game that kind of sets it apart from other Euro Rosenberg worker placement games is that there is a stock mechanic in which you're basically buying and selling of shares in a stock market and obviously if a person certain pl player is pushing for a certain fishing company then you might want to get on board with that this looks like to be Yuri Rosenberg's next big game so I am excited Feast of Odin was a fantastic surprise for me and if it's anything like that or if it's anything as well designed as that I definitely see myself picking it up. Um, this kind of reminds me of how we went from having Agricola into things like uh, The Glass Road and Aura and Labora, and those were two very good games. So I can see this being the same thing where we just went from having Feast of Odin to now having this. And number one is Transatlantic by Matt Gertz. Now, this was a surprise when I was going through the Essen Spiel preview list, I was thinking, well, what is interesting about this? Yuri Rosenberg's Newsford would probably be my number one because I like the theme. I have been to Norway. I love that area. Um, yet this is not basically by designer Matt Gertz and he did Concordia. And Concordia is one of my favorite games. It's basically my number one game. And this promises very similar gameplay essentially. You are a 
basically a businessman controlling various uh, shipping companies around the world. You're trying to build out your shipping lanes, control the best ships, providing transport for people, while at the same time trying to build trading posts and coal posts in the various places around the world. What was even more interesting is that it plays like Concordia. On your turn, you have a hand of cards and you'll play one card and perform that action and through time you'll gain access to more cards which gives you more actions. Again, this is a game that's also been in development for, I think, when he released Concordia, he started developing this game. So this is by far one of the games I am going to be keeping my eye out for. This favorite design, one of my favorite designers, based off one of my favorite games, I this is a game I want. I just want to see more of it, and I do want to see a couple of reviews first. But before that being said, if you're going to Essen, this is probably the game. If you are a fan of Euros, and if you're a fan of Concordia, I think you should be running for this game. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you have enjoyed this top 10 list. I'm sure you have different picks. If you do, let me know in the comment section. And if you did like this video, remember to basically hit the like button and please subscribe. I'm always excited to do these kind of videos. These are some of my favorite. And of course, I have my thoughts videos and I am slowly expanding on a playlist. Um, these are various um, YouTube videos that have wonderful soundtracks that you can basically click on and then have them in the background for various games. So I think I have one for C4, if you want a nice um, seafaring track. Uh, there's, one, there's one for, I'm trying to think now, Tokaido as well. That's going to be, that's on there. Uh, and that will slowly go over time. So if you're looking for something you want to pair a game with a certain um, soundtrack, then definitely go check out that list as well. Anyway, thank you so much, so much for watching. Bye-bye.